we hear, right? So let me, uh, let me quickly uh, remind you. So to call a function, what do you do? You will do uh, BL and then label, is that right? That's to, to jump to a function, to call a subroutine. BL label, just remember that. To return from a subroutine, what do you do? BXLR, is that right? That's the way. BL label to jump to the function and then BXLR to return. Okay, just re uh, remember these two things. And of, of course, for, for returning from, um, from the, uh, the subroutine, you, you can have a few more ways to jump back, right? So basically, um, yeah, so, so you will learn later, or maybe you can read in the book, right? Um, but for now, just remember these two things for me, uh, BL label, BXLR, okay? So if you look at over here, and I remember last time uh, I said this is a, uh, on the left is the main program, right? So the main program use register as R4 and it loads, it copy 100 to R4, right? And then it called the subroutine foo over here and foo actually uses uh, R4 as well and it, uh, it copy, copies 10 to R4, destroy um, the value 100 from the, the, the main program, right? So when you return, return from the subroutine over here, uh, and this is the, the instruction in the main program, um, the main program uh, expects to see 11, right? But because this one destroyed um, um, R4, so if, if you don't do anything, R4 over here will have the value of 11, okay? So now, if you really want to have the value of 101 as expected, or what, you, what will you do in the subroutine? And I remember Adam uh, suggested uh, a way, and I, I uh, actually that's the, the right way to do, is um, in the subroutine, uh, before you do anything, you have to save R4, right? Actually, not only R4, R4 in this case, but uh, uh, you usually save um, a, few, uh, a few more registers, R4, R5, R6, something, right? Uh, you don't need to, to save R0 to R3, but from R4, you have to save them all to save the uh, caller environment, don't destroy it. And then at the end, at the end over here, before returning to the main program, you just restore R4, uh, okay, for the main program, okay? So, um, and so, but where, where, where will we save um, the value of R4, 100, uh, 100 in this case? And I remember Adam also suggested to use stack, right? So, so that's why today we will learn the stack. Stack is basically a, a region in memory for you to, to do that purpose. I mean, to, to, save, the, uh, to, to save the register um, when you, um, uh, when you uh, call the subroutine, right? Or maybe you can uh, um, save the return address, for example, from uh, fr um, when you have to jump back from the subroutine to the... Uh, to the um, main program, you also need to save the address as well. And sometimes for local variable, for local variable of the subroutine, you also need to save as well. I think that it seemed to me that the, the internet connection is not good or something. It, can you still hear me uh, uh, okay? Okay, uh, okay, very good. So with that, with that in, uh, introduction, Let's go. Uh, let move to uh, the stack, right? Move to the uh, the slide uh, talking about the stack. I think that's slide number. Uh, right here. Okay. Okay. So I think that the stack is very useful. I mean, especially when you had to do the uh, recursive uh, call, for example, right? It's, it's extremely useful. Okay. But what is a stack? As I said. The stack is a, a region in memory um, for you to 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 um, to do uh, the things that I, I just uh, um, listed out for you, and it's you can think about this is a, the memory over here, right? So uh, you can put word to save into the memory over here, and the special thing about the stack is it has two main operations: uh, push, um, meaning putting some work uh, 
from for, from register, for example, to the memory, right? Think think about the stack as a, a memory over here, right? And then pop pop is to take the word out of the memory and load it into uh, uh, into processor into register in the processor uh, um, processor, for example, right? So the um, you know, what can you see over here? The the special thing about the stack over here, right? So if you you put I mean uh, sequentially. Uh, two of the word into here. Uh, the first one is here. The first one is here. Is that right? The second is here, and the last one you put it over here, right? So that's a for pushing. And then when you take out, actually you you will take out the one that got into the memory last. Is that right? So if you put one, two, three in, then when you pop, you have to pop three first, and then two, and then one, right? So, so, so that's the that's why in this case uh, we call stack is last in first up, and then the two main operation for for stack is just push and pop, and that's all. Push is putting something uh, into the stack, pop is uh, taking it up, and that's all. Okay, easy to understand. So let's move to slide number twelve. Okay, so this is the stack for um, Cortex M, the the processor type that I uh, that we are. Are using for this class, right? So as you already remember, um, uh, maybe this one you will learn about later, uh, peripheral later, the flash memory to store your programming code, you already know, right? So usually it starts from 0, 8 to 0, 0 something. And the second uh, big uh, memory region that I like to, to, to pay attention is this data memory over here, right? So it usually starts from 0, X two zero 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 zero. Okay, right here, right. So let me uh, let me zoom in to uh, into this uh, memory region for you to see. So that will be in here, right? So do you remember in the midterm or in class? I usually ask you to allocate uh, a variable uh, using BCD or whatever, right? So it usually go to here, right? Go to this region. Right of the of the S RAM over here, the stack now today we 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 are learning stack is actually the stack uh, is put up here, right? It put up here, and whenever you you put something in here, it actually you put it grow down <laughs> because the stack star up here, right? So if you put more uh, um, uh, more work in there, uh, it actually go down 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 over here, okay? Right and uh, and when it hit to the bottom over here, of course, we are out of the stack. So, uh, so we'll make sure that your program uh, uh, um, doesn't use that much of memory. Otherwise, um, you don't have uh, enough capacity for the stack. Okay. So you can think, you can think in this case, the stack here is like, is like this, this figure uh, upside down. Okay. You put upside down. So whenever you put, uh, you push something. Um, onto the stack, actually, you put from this uh, from this side, okay, and take out from this side. Oh, actually, there is, there is a better um, better figure over here, so you can and look at over here, okay. So um, this is stack. Start from the top over here, and if you push something, it will go down, okay. And if you you pop out, uh, you will take from this this end, just one end, okay. So. Um, as I said, the stack is just a memory, right? So when you push something in there, how do you, how do you know uh, where to put it, right? So maybe you, again, you have to, to ask me again. Whenever you whenever you push something into the memory, you need the address, right? Think about memory again. Think about uh, memory as houses on uh, a street or something, right? So if you want to put something in these uh, house uh, the houses, then you need the address, right? So the address uh, um, of the the memory uh, in the stack that you uh, um, just specify where to push the the new word in there is specify uh, is stored in the SP the stack pointer register. Okay, always remember that the stack pointer uh, keep the address um, of the last word of the of the stack. Okay. So if you push a new one in, the stack pointer will move down by four. Okay, will 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 change. Uh, move down by four, 
and then the new word will come in and fill in that location, okay? So if you push more, the stack pointer keep going down, okay? So you, you can see over here. So stack pointer is basically the register number 13. It is you to specify the top of the stack, okay? So when you push, the stack pointer will uh, uh, will um, decrease, uh, right? And then when you pop, basically when you take it out, then the stack pointer will be incremented, okay? So um, so for the Cortex M's, uh, the SP, the stack pointer actually start from uh, two zero 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 two zero zero. It's a up here, up here, okay. So when you uh, when you push more work, it actually go down, go down, go down, go down. Okay, understand? Uh, if you don't have uh, any question, if not, then I like to move to, um, to over here. So you can see uh, how do we how, actually how um, how do the engineer at arm build the the, um, the operation push and pop for the set? You know what? Behind the scene, actually. The push and the pop operation is implement, in, implemented from one of the instructions that you already learned before. And that instruction is store multiple uh, dB. Just that, I mean, you, you can think about it. I mean, behind the scene, the push here is just the STM, store multiple decrement before. DB, okay? So, uh, if you see something like push and then you specify the register list over here, it is equivalent to STM DB. SP exclamation, uh, exclamation point. So, remember that when we push, the SP will be updated, okay? And then the, uh, the register list over here to specify uh, what register you want to save into the stack, okay? And when you pop out, it is basically behind the scene. Is uh, the operation is is executed by this instruction? Pop is equivalent to uh, load. Load means taking something from the memory, right? Taking from something from memory uh, and load into the registers. Okay, so load and then increase after you load first. You take the memory, well, you take the word out, and then you increase. The address you you update the SP, okay, and specify the register over here, okay, um, um, uh, specify the destination. So don't worry if you uh, if if it's a little bit confused over here, but we will do the um, a few examples, and I hope that you understand very very well about this one. So don't worry too much. Um, besides, we already um, learned about the STMDB and LDMIA before, right? And you, I remember you also did some uh, problem in the homework as well. So, so with that, I don't think that you have any problem with stack at all, right? So, just a, a reminder: uh, stack pointer is the um, the register that keeps the address of the top of the stack over here, right? So, um, if you use the push, you continue to put uh, words from this end, right? And then if you use pop, you can take the, the word out from the same end uh, as well, right? Uh, so if you use the stack operation push and pop, um, you can manipulate the word at this end. However, uh, you can use the stack pointer because this is just a, the, the address, right? You can use this one and add with some offset and then you can access uh, any word up here if you want to, right? Remember in chapter five, you use the, uh, I remember that's, uh, um, that's the, uh, the pre-index, post-index, uh, pre-index with update, you know, and the bay address, you can use the bay address as SP, and then you can specify some offset, and, and, and then you can access these words if you want to, right? But, but uh, to be safe, when you deal with the, the stack, um, we usually just use push and pop to be safe, to, to make sure that we don't actually accidentally take out something from uh, uh, access 
changing something up here, right? So everything is just from this edge to be set, okay? Um, so let's move to the next slide over here. Okay, so let's review again as I promised. So if you don't understand uh, right away, uh, we will uh, um, have example for you to Push something into the stack, uh, it will the the stack pointer move down, right? So that's why R A should be first, right? It will it will store I A uh, onto the stack first over here, and then R seven and R six. Okay, so this one is actually equivalent to this one. Okay, so let me stop a. Oh, let me stop a little bit because some somebody uh, has some problem. Uh, so twin. Uh, are you okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, wonderful. So, uh, uh, do you understand the push operation over here? Um, not really, because I missed like three lines or so. Okay, no problem. So you can think about this one, uh, twin. So push R eight, R seven, R six is equivalent to store multiple uh, decrement before, right? And then you, uh, you do the FT over here, and this is the R8, R6, R7, okay? So in case if you forget about a push, for example, so just remember the equivalent um, equivalent instructions uh, for push, okay? Understand? Yeah. Uh, and remember, for, for uh, store or low multiple register, the, the order of the register here uh, doesn't matter, okay? So um, it always it will be I mean they will be sorted um, before storing or loading. So in this case, um, um, because you you did the homework already, so I hope that uh, just remember push is uh, store uh, db okay? store stm db. So uh, ra will be store first. Is that right, twin? Yeah. Yeah, and then r seven r six right. Okay. So now um, now if I change uh, push 
Oh, oh okay. I, I, you will, will practice more, so don't worry. Let's let's uh, let's move on, and then we will have another slide to to practice on this one. Okay. How about for pop? Okay. So for pop, uh, a little different over here. For pop, then you have to take the word out first, and then you increase the address. You can increase the SP. Okay. For push, you uh, uh, you determine the address first and store the word in. For pop, you take out the word first and then increase the address. Okay. So just remember that. Go back to here. See. So for pop, if you specify, for example, R three over here, right? So it will take out something in memory pointed to by the stack pointer register. You take the, the that word out and put in R three for me. R whatever R you you specify over here. Okay, then the stack pointer will increase by four. Okay, this is a increase after right. Uh, um, uh, increment uh, after IA. Okay, so let's practice for me. Uh, uh, practice with me over here. So uh, again, this is uh, nothing but the uh, the low multiple uh, um, register that you learned before. So that's why the order in here it doesn't matter. And because because um, the address will increase right when you pop out something. So that's why you have to take the, um, you basically take out some word in the memory and store in R6 first, and then R7, and then R8, right? So if you, you see something like pop, uh, R8, R7, R6, uh, what actually happened is it will pop out the a word in memory and load into R6 first, and then take the next one. And load into R7 and take another, uh, the next one and load into register R8. Okay, so understand push and pop, right? Um, uh, let's do a few more, a few more slides to uh, to reinforce what uh, uh, you learned, okay? To be very sure. So, for example, I have a stack over here, right? So, in this case, remember uh, for each box here to save, uh, to save space, um, each box here. Uh, represents uh, four bytes, okay, thirty-two bits. So enough. Uh, but remember, this is uh, this is memory, okay, memory over here, okay. So currently, the stack pointer point to point to this house, this house, right? Just remember, this one is a memory. Is like houses on the street over here. So the the SP has the address, and it points to this house, for example, right? And now you push uh, four register into the memory, right? Into the stack, okay? So you push, uh, push what? Uh, R3, R1, R7, R2. Remember, when you push something, the stack pointer will go down. You go down. That's why you have to, um, uh, you have to store R7 first. Remember that, right? R7 and then R3 and then R2 and then R1 in that order, okay? And remember SP, before you, you store R7, it will not store over here. Understand that. If you if you put R7 here, that's wrong. Before pushing something, SP actually go down first to point to the empty space for R7 to come in, okay? So that's what, um, for this instruction, R7 will be stored here, okay? R3 will be here. R2 will be here. And then R1. Understand? So, comfortable with that answer? If so, then I move to here to show you. Right there, R7, right here. This is the old SP over here, the old um, stack pointer. And then R7 will, will, will be there, R3, R2, and R1. And after doing this, uh, the, the um, stack pointer uh, is changed to the new number over here, okay? It's actually, it's, it has been updated to point to the last one over here. Okay, very good. So back to here to uh, to practice the pop up operation over here. Okay, remember push is you push some register into the, the memory, right, into the set. So now pop is actually you will take something out of memory 
and low into the registers, basically in the reverse direction, right? Okay, so the stack pointer before doing this one, the stack pointer points to this location in memory, okay? And this, this is the destination, your destination uh, over here, okay? So what do you think? So remember, when you pop out something, the stack pointer will increase, okay? So that's why, and for the pop, you actually uh, take out some work first before you increase. So that's why you will take out zero first, right? And you will put in what register? The lowest number register, right? So you will put zero into R1, understand? Then the stack pointer will move to here. And, it, and you continue to take four and low into R2, and it's eight low into R3, and then 12 low into R7. And at the end, at the end, uh, the stack pointer will point to where? Anybody can tell me? Remember, increase after. So the, I remember the last time we, we, um, we took out something, instead of 12 over here, we put in R7 over here. And after this instruction, uh, the stack pointer will point to here or to here. Anybody can, can tell me? Uh, Christian say, say 16, William say 16. Wonderful, wonderful, that's, that's correct. That's correct, and actually Matthew has some uh, question. So just to make sure for the push, it goes, uh, that's, that's right, Matthew, yeah, R7, R3 for push, yeah. Okay, so um, back to pop again. Zero, go to here, four, go to there, eight, go to here, 12, go to there, and the stack pointer will point to 16, is that right? Okay, let's see, let's check to see if your answer is correct. Or one of what? Wonderful, yeah, everything's correct. You see the SP after this one, as it is over here, and you can see R1 will, will take the value of zero over here, R2, four, R3, eight, uh, seven, correct, wonderful. Yeah, I'm very happy that you uh, you understand up to this point, everything about uh, push and pop, wonderful. Any question? Let me stop for 30 seconds in case, it, uh, in case you have questions. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. So let me move on, right? So, um, ah, okay. So in this case, you know, um, actually more example about push and pop, but now you use push and pop to do something useful. So in this case, um, okay, in this case, this is a register over, over here, okay? This is a register in the processor. This is the memory. This is the the, uh, the stack, for example, okay? This is a memory, this is a pro processor, okay? That's a different thing, okay? So in, in the processor, uh, you have a bunch of register, right? R0, R1, R2, whatever, right? So uh, the value for R1 is actually 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the, the value for R2 is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 okay? Over here, okay? So now, let me see. Okay, now, if you want to swap, uh, if you want to swap these two values in the processor, in the register, for example, you want the, you want two, 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 go to here, and one, 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 go to here, right? Uh, what do you do? I, I think that because you already know how to copy things, right? So maybe you don't really need the memory at all, right? What do we need the memory, of, right? So um, one way is you uh, you move R1 to maybe to R3, exactly, right? To store it, store it there, temporary, right? And then move R2 to R1, and then move R3 back to here, is that right? That's one way to do, okay? But at today, actually, I, I'm asking you to do the same thing, to swap the value over here using the stack, using the memory, okay? So do you agree? Do you agree that if I execute these four instructions, the value in the rest in the rest of R1 and R3 will be swapped? Do you agree with me? 
Okay. Uh, uh, Kristen said yes. He agreed. Anybody else? I'd like to see more answers to be sure that I, I should move on. Matthew, yes. Anybody doesn't understand? If not, practice with me, okay? Don't worry, right? So let's see. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if, if uh, after doing this, uh, two, 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 two go to here, okay? And one, one, one go to there. So I think it's maybe over here. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see what it is. Okay, I, I actually, I was looking for uh, the stack pointer. I, I'd like to know where the stack pointer. And actually, actually, in the picture, it's very clear over here, right? So initially, the stack pointer is, has a value uh, the two zero 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 two zero zero over here. So initially, it actually point to to this location in the stack. Okay, remember SP in is in the processor, but it has the address. This address point to this location in the memory in the stack. Okay, okay. So now push R one. So R one will go into this box. Is that right? Somebody agree with me or not agree with me? So when I push R1, R1 will, will come here. Is that right? Matthew said no. Ismail, no. Ismail, no. Anybody, anybody, yes? I'm looking for a yes. Because that's my answer. <laughs> Nobody follow me. <laughs> oh, Kevin, Kevin. Are you kidding or, or, uh, or um, are, are you serious, Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm happy that uh, you are kidding me. <laughs> okay, so remember for push, right? For push, you have to decrease the stack pointer first. So at the beginning, stack pointer is 200 zero zero over here. You really have to subtract by four first to, to, to go down here, and R1 will go to here. Is that right? So push R1, I want go to here, and then, then then you push again. So R2 will go to here, right? R1 here and R2 over here. So let's see. See, if you push it, so uh, so you see the R1, 1, 1, 1, 1 over here, you go to here, right? So let, let me click one more. So R2, you go to here, and the stack pointer actually point to this location over here. Now, let's see pop, okay? So now pop. Pop R1, remember you, you can only pop from one end. You cannot pop from this end, right? So it will pop, it will take this word out and put in R1. So that's why you can see two, 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 two something. And you can you put in R1, right? Because that's what you, you you say over here, right? So and then you pop again next time. Okay, let, let's go step by step. So when you pop this one, so two 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 will go to here. Is that right? So up to this point. Probably you understand, right? And then the stack pointer will increase by four, so it will point to to this location. And now you pop again, you pop R2, right? Pop R2 means taking the memory uh, content pointed to by SP and then put into R2. So you, you are asking the processor to put this number into here, okay? So let's see if that's true. See, see, and it goes to here. So you can see, by using the memory, in this case, and using the pop and put, you can swap these two values right there, right? So that's the effect that you really want. And of course, at the end of this one, you can see the stack pointer um, moves back to uh, the initial um, in the value over here, okay? Okay, wonderful. I'm very happy that um, a lot of you um, understand very well um, uh, these slides, okay? So let's move on. Um, a few more practice, okay? And, and answer me, okay? Actually, I already put the answer up there. Are the values of R1 and R2 swap? If you push, if you do only two instructions, so oh, remember over here, we, we did four instructions, push, push, pop, pop, right? And the effect is you truly swap these two values. Now, if you do two, if you push R1 and R2, Okay, and you pop R2 and R1. Do you think that the value in these two registers will be swapped? Actually, no. Why? Somebody tell me why. Do 
Is it because the uh, push and pop only does one uh, pointer chain at a time? Oh, because because the ordering process behind the scene is that right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, somebody said, Kristen said, because it orders automatically. Yeah, that's the main reason. That's the main reason. Uh, let, let me wait for, because uh, the, there are some people typing, so let me wait for that answer, for the answer. So let me, uh, Raz, uh, Azaria say, they need their own instruction and is auto, auto, auto. Yeah, that's correct, that's, that's correct. And right, so it's the same. So uh, for some of you uh, that uh, still don't understand, let's go through with me, okay? So when you push, R1, R2, right? It order first. So R2 will be pushed first and then R1. It means it means that R2 will get to here, okay? I mean two, 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 two will get to here and, and one, 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 one will get to here. Understand? Yeah, so push over here, R2 will be here and R1 will be here, okay? And now, now you pop out. So you pop, actually, you, you take that one uh, to take the value, the lowest value first, and put in R1. But remember, the lowest value last uh, from here, the lowest value is actually R1 over here, right? You put R2 here and R1 over here. And then when you pop, you will pop the lowest value first, and you put this R1 back to R1 again. So it doesn't do anything, see, right? So for sure this one doesn't work, right? But if you do this, it will work because if you push something like this, R2 will, will be pushed into the stack first and then R1. So the situation is uh, R2 will be here. R2 will be here and R1 will be here, right? R1 is at the bottom of here, okay? And then you pop R2 first, it means that you take the value of R, this is still the value of R1, right? And you take it out first and you put into R2. Okay, that's good. So that's why it works. In, in this case, you, you pop R2 take, um, and then you pop R1, so it will be correct. So um, in the same manner, if you trace this one, you will see that you, uh, can, uh, you can achieve uh, what you want by using this free instruction as well. Achieve what you want means uh, swap um, the value of R1 and R2 in the processor, okay? So um, hopefully by now you understand very well. And, and you know what, it's a little bit tricky, is it right? So be careful um, in, in case if you have uh, some questions uh, like this in the exam, be careful, be careful, okay? Auto, um, um, the, uh, the, it orders uh, uh, automatic, um, automatically, okay? okay? So uh, let's move on to uh, slide number 25. Oh, so what is this thing? Ah, okay. Oh, it seemed to me that we go back to the slide that I, I mentioned at the very beginning uh, of the lecture, okay? So um, I, I still remember Adam uh, suggest to, to say the value R4 um, to the stack first, right? And then when we come back, we will restore um, the R4 value, 100 value over here uh, for the main program, right? And that's exactly what it, uh, what it does over here, you can see. So uh, so over here, the main program copy 100 into R4, right? And down here, after we've done with this one, the main program will try to increase R4 by one, so it expects to have 101 uh, at, uh, um, in the register R4, right? So let's see what, how it does. So at this point, uh, it jumped to this subroutine, right? And the subroutine will use R4, right? But before using R4, I mean the subroutine, okay, don't worry, the main program, I will save the value of R4 for you by pushing it to the stack. See, see this one? Push R4, right? So it means that R4 will now resides in the stack at this point, right? So 100, um, the value of 100 is now in the stack, okay? And then you can do whatever with R4 you want, right? And then at the end, before returning to um, to the main program, you just pop out. Pop out means taking that value of R4, 
right? Uh, 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 taking the value um, in the stack and put it back to R4. That, that's what top means, okay? So we call R4 over here. So by this point, after you return over here, you, you, uh, you return to this point, right? Uh, at this point, R4 uh, uh, has the value of, what do you think? 100, right? Because you just restore it, so 100, not 10 anymore, right? So, um, so this is exactly what, what uh, we want to have, um, uh, 100 on R4, right? And then the main program will increase R4 by 1 to, to get 101 over here. Okay, understand? No problem? Okay, if you have no problem, uh, let, um, let me wait 30 seconds anyway. Ah, G just said, ask, what is the purpose, what is the point of the subroutine then? Oh, of course, uh, uh, this subroutine doesn't do anything useful. <laughs> of course, uh, Jesus, <laughs> did you recognize that? This subroutine is just to illustrate how to uh, save the caller uh, environment, okay? But of course, this is a, a useless subroutine, of course, right? I, in the homework, you will develop something uh, useful, okay? So, uh, so not in this lecture. Understand, teachers? Okay. Okay, so William uh, asked, how does put and pop work with DCD value? Oh, remember the DCD value is in a different region of the memory, okay? Understand, William? Uh, if you uh, maybe maybe let me let me come back very quickly to uh, uh, here here usually for mm -hmm. DCD when you uh, when you uh, allocate something it, it is in this region right but push push and pop is actually related to the stack up here okay yeah. so for DCD when you allocate something you usually take out by by the um, Remember the midterm, right? You take out the value uh, by using by first of all loading the address of the variable, right? And and, and load into from memory to the to the, the register, or vice versa, right? So uh, so that's a, a different way to to take the value here into the register and put it back here. Okay? But put and pop, push and pop, is here for the stack up here. Okay. Okay. So let me move to. So when you're loading values to say arbitrarily one to three to five when you move the values into register r zero and it'll carry the list one to three four five and just keep on pushing r zero i mean popping r zero okay uh, um, uh william you know what the sound is not very good so oh, yeah. can you repeat again slowly and short, I mean, exactly go to the point to see for me to understand exactly so, the problem. If not, then, then uh, write me an email, okay? So don't worry too much about it. So yeah. go ahead. And so basically, you have, um, let's say, a DCD of uh, one, two, three, four, five. You move said uh, list into re register R0. So, so you'd want to do is uh, just remove the uh, list from R0, you just keep on popping R0? Uh, if you pop R0, then it will take something, not from the data the region that I, I, I told you. It will take from the uh, from the stack to register R0. If you, you pop different reason, it will take the value from the stack, okay? And put in the register R zero for you. Understand? If you do pop R zero, for example, it will take um, the memory location in the stack, point it to by the stack pointer. It will take that value and then bring it to the R, uh, register R zero for you. Do you understand, William? Somewhat. Basically, let me let me summarize that. Push and pop are used for the stack only. Okay. Whenever you push and pop, the processor will look into the, 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 
the stack region to take the value out or to push the value in there. You understand? Not at no. the at the at the at the bottom of the data region that I just showed you. Okay. 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 So back to here. Back to okay. A slide. This slide we already talked about. Let's let's talk about slide number twenty six. Uh huh. Okay. So we talk about this one. Before talking about this one, let let me move to here. Let me move to to this slide. I remember that we have something in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is exactly what, what, what I, I like to mention. Um, so remember, when the, the main program or, or the, the caller, right, uh, the, the function who call um, somebody else, so when the main program calls the subroutine, right, so the subroutine is responsible to store these value, subroutine preserve, right? So R4, R5, R6, R7, whatever. If the subroutine use the value, it, it, it has to say um, and then restore at the end for, for the caller, okay? And if you really look at that one, you will see link raised there, no. Do we really need to say when you call the subroutine, for example, right? Do we really need to push the link register onto the stack? Over here, say no. Why? Link register is a pretty important register, is that right? So for example, when you call a subroutine, you jump from the main program to that subroutine, right? And then when you're done with the subroutine, you like to return back to the main program. And at that time, you will look at the link register to see what address is in there, right? Because the address in the link register is actually the address uh, right after the, uh, the the function call, so that's the point um, uh, for you to jump back to the main program, right? So actually, the return address you already saved in link register, right? So that's why you don't need to save any uh, anywhere. No problem, right? So no problem. However, however, in some situation, you also need to save the link register onto the stack, okay? Over here, it just says no, because it, um, because it, it just called one time. But you will see, when I return to slide number 26, you will see that in some other situation, you really need to push LR onto the stack as well. So uh, what are these cases? So let's, let's look at that. Let's look at slide number 26. Okay. So you will see right away, right? So in this case, you can see the main program called the subroutine foo, right? And you can see that before doing anything, foo push the LR, save the LR onto the stack. Why? You have to ask me why, right? So if, if you don't have this part, for example, if foo doesn't call anybody else, right? Then we don't really need to push LR at all, right? But in this case, because who also call somebody, in this case, call bar, right? So that's why who need, uh, need to, um, to preserve, uh, need to save the LR and register onto the stack before calling bar, okay? So let me repeat again. If the subroutine call somebody else, right? Then that subroutine needs to preserve the link register mean pushing it to the stack. If the subroutine doesn't call anybody else, then you don't need to do push LR and pop LR over here. Okay? The reason probably you asked me why, right? So if you look it over here, you will see very, very clearly. Okay? So let's let look over me uh, over here uh, with me and you will see why, right? Okay. So um, so over here, I'm sorry, I'm looking at some question over here, but, but I can come back to answer you later, right? So let's focus on this one uh, for now. So you can see the, this is the main program over here, and then the, uh, the program execute this one, right? So when the program 
execute this BL foo, it um, the BL label um, implies two action, right? The first action is to save the address of the next instruction over here into the link register. You can see that associated with, with this jump, I actually save PC plus four, meaning meaning the address of this instruction into the link register, right? And then I will change PC to foo to the label for the processor to jump from here to there. Okay, right? So assume assume that we didn't do this. Assume that we didn't do the. Okay, maybe maybe I assume later. Okay, so you save you save the um, associated with the, the function call over here. You save the PC plus four into the link register, and then you jump to here. So at the end, when you return, right? When you return, hopefully, you really have to to remember the address PC plus four, right? And you hope that. PC plus four is still in the link register because you do the VXLR, right? So LR has to to have this value, PC plus four, for you to jump back from here, right? However, if this function call another function over here, so whenever you you use the the, the instruction BL bar, it will override the link register. Okay, so now. With this call, it jumped to here, and the link register has the correct value PC plus PC one plus four over here. And then you go down here, and at this point, you call again. You call again, right? So what is the next instruction? The next instruction is PC two plus four. So you can see if you don't do this, I mean PC two will override the LR register over here. See, the LR register uh, now has the value of PC two plus four. Right, override this value. So, and then it jumps to here, and it, uh, it executes this command. When it comes back, it will look at the the LR register, right? Look at LR register, and it uh, and it the processor will see PC two plus four in there. Wonderful. So that's why you can jump back to this point, right? So now you continue to go down here. Assume that you don't do this, and you don't do this, okay? Means that you didn't save the, the PC one plus four before onto the stack. So you go down here, and when it look, when you hit the uh, instruction instruction B, uh, BXLR, you will look at the LR register, and you would see PC two plus four. That's the problem, because if you if you see PC two plus four, you would jump back to here. That's the problem, right? What you want is actually you want to jump back to there. Right, but because you didn't save it, you didn't save the PC one plus four. Then, then, then you jump back to here. That's what. If this subroutine, the full subroutine, calls somebody else before doing anything, please save the PC one plus four to the stack first. Right. So when, when you when the subroutine here finishes the thing, at the end over here. The full subroutine will restore, bringing back the value PC one plus four, stored in the stack back to the LR uh, LR register, right? And then full will execute the BXLR, and at this time, LR has the value of PC one plus four because you just restore over here, right? So that's why you can come back to that and come back to the main program. See? Okay, so you, you you know why you know why if the subroutine also call another subroutine, this subroutine needs to preserve, needs to push the link register onto the stack to save it. Okay, uh, there's one more thing, one more uh, um, small detail that I, I, I like to uh, to remind you over here. So do you remember that you know, we always said to uh, to, uh, to return from a subroutine, you usually use the instruction BXLR, right? There is another um, another uh, way to return from the subroutine. That's you use the pop PC, right? So um, the pop PC is, is let me see. Yeah, so. Right, 
So in this case, in this case, um, you push, you push LR, right? Because you, you use, uh, you push LR over here. So when you push LR, you put this value, PC2 plus four onto the stack. Is that right? All right. And then at the end, top PC means you take this one, you take the PC2 plus four value and put it back to PC, right? And whenever you put anything in PC, the processor would just follow the PC to, to, to execute the next instruction. So because PC, you pop the, the value here into the PC. So PC will have the value of PC two plus four, right? So that's why you come back and execute this instruction. And that's exactly what we want. Come back to, uh, to, the, to this um, correct instruction over here. So let me, uh, let me stop a little bit to look at the question from ZE, okay? Do we need BXLR in the bar subroutine? Oh, we don't need any more because uh, this is another way to return from, from the bar uh, subroutine, okay? Understand? So um, so you can use some, uh, most of the time you use BXLR to return, right? In some other case, you can use uh, pop PC. That's, uh, that's another way to, to return, okay? So let's go to, uh, so what is this thing? Okay, so subroutine calling another subroutine. Okay, so this is, this is just a uh, just a review over here. Okay, so now you have a function main over here, and what do we do over here? Can you recognize? Can you uh, trace this uh, slide with me? So first of all, we we move two to register R zero, right? Right. And then you call the function quad, okay? You call the function quad. So actually there are many things that we talk, that we can talk about this slide, okay? So first of all, uh, move two to register R zero and then call function quad, okay? Meaning it will jump from here to there. Is that right? Right? Okay, so, so you can ask me, the very first instruction of of quad is actually push LR. Why? Why do we need to to, to save LR? Right? Aha. Uh -huh. If you really look at the body of quad, you will see that ah, this guy also calls somebody else. Actually, inside the body of quad, it actually calls SQL function. Right? So when it calls SQL function, it will override the LR. Over here, right? So that's what. If the quad calls somebody else, the quad the quad function over here needs to push to uh, to save the LR over here, right? So you can see in, in this case uh, we save the LR first, and then the quad will call this function, right? And then return to here, and the quad again go back to here, and then return to here. Is that right? And then return to here. And at this point, I restore the link register that I that I push up here. Right? Restore that link register. And when I re restore the link register here, it will have the address of the of the instruction right after calling this one. Basically, the address of the NL over here, right? So after restore this one, I have the address this one. And then when I do BXLR, it will jump to here, right? Okay. So now. Um, let's look at over here. Let's let, uh, go through again. Move two to R zero, and then call the function quad. So you come to here, you save the link register, and then you call the 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 um, square function. So when you jump to here, and the square function just square the value in register R zero, right? Multi, uh, multiply R zero with R zero and put back to R zero. So, so just just the uh, just square the value um, in the register R zero, and then you return back to here and you call the function again, right? So remember that re register R zero has been square already, right? So now you square again. So that's why you raise the you raise the the value in register R zero to the power of four. Is that right? Because you call this one twice, right? And then after that, you return to here and you return to here. That's why the function is called quad because actually you, 
um, to raise the, to the power of four, okay? Okay, so, uh, or oh, somebody give me the answer, Matthew. Is that correct? So let's see, two square of two is four. four. Oh, wonderful, yeah, that's correct, that's correct, right? So now you, you understand over here. So there is another point that I want to remind you over here is before calling the function quad, quad actually uh, needs one argument, is that right? Right? Quad of what number? Do you want, you want to, to raise to, uh, to the power of four for what number, right? So, so for quad, it, it needs one argument, right? And remember to pass the argument from the main function to the sub function, what do you do? You put that one in register R0, is that right? Remember, R0 is for passing argument, right? Back to here. I just reinforced for you to, to remember, yeah, here. So to pass the argument from the main function to the subroutine, you use R0. If you, you, you have one argument, if you have two arguments, then you use R0 and R1, blah, 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 okay? Up to R3 over here, okay? Just, just remind you. So, so you know why we have to do this step. This step is basically to pass the argument from the main function to to the uh, to the quad function, right? We 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 use R zero over here, right? Okay. So so with that understanding, let's see the following slide. We'll go through uh, what you and I just discussed on this lecture, right? Just really important to see if your understanding is correct. So let's move, let's go to here. Here, see? So for the main function, you pass the argument by putting the argument uh, in register as zero, and then you call function quad. So from here to here, you jump to here, right? And the very first one, you push the LR, and then you call the function square from here. So you jump from here, right? You jump square here, you go down here, and you return from BXLR, right? You return to to this uh, to this instruction, right? But this but this instruction is actually another function call. So that's why it returned back to here. The blue arrow over here returned back to here and execute this one. And when it hits the BXLR again, it will return to here. Is that right? Return to the to the instruction right after the function call, right? So that's why it returned to here. And when it returns to here, it will execute the next one over here, right? But the next one is actually a return instruction to the NL instruction over here, okay? So do, do you understand the, the, um, the sequence over here? So let me trace the sequence again, okay, for you to, to see. From here, down to here, go to here, down to here, jump to there, down here, jump back to here, and call the function, you jump to here again, go down here, return here, go down here, return there. Okay, that's the whole thing. So let me see, um, one question for me. BXLR goes back to the previous function, previous function, and continue on the line of code in the link register. Uh, oh, you mean here? Matthew, this is what you asked? Yeah. When it returns from here to here, it will, will continue to execute the next one, is that right? So it go to here, right? But this one is also the, uh, a branch the, the instruction. And then it go from here to there. Remember, when it returns to here, you actually restore, you have to, when you return from here to here, you have to execute this one first. And this one restores the, the, the value of link register that you saved before, you restore it over here. So that's why the LR has the value of this instruction at this point. And that's why it knows how to jump back to here. Understand? Matthew? That's okay. Jesus, why does function SQ need push in top line? Oh, oh, oh. Because, because the, uh, the, uh, Function SQ doesn't call anybody. Is that right? Understand, Gidget? If SQ also calls some other subroutine, then we will save 
we will push LR and, and, and pop LR, okay? But over here, actually, S field doesn't call A nobody else, okay? Okay, so let's go to here. Ah, okay. So to here, let me see. So um, this is another example, and I, I really like <laughs> to have some kind of exam question for you to really understand the flow, the flow that we 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 we, we just uh, um, we have an example over here, and the flow here is from here to here, go to here, go to here, go to here, go go back, go to here, back to here, jump here, and then go back to here, down here, go back here, right? So that's the flow like that, and hopefully you understand very well. So, uh, and to uh, reinforce uh, that understanding, let's do one more example. Actually, actually the same example, I think. Yeah, yeah, the same example. Yeah, the same example. But in this case, it, uh, we will go, we will have uh, uh, more details in here for you to see. Uh, to see, oh, this is the whole area over here, right? In the uh, in the um, instruction memory. And you also see the registers in the processor, and you also can see the um, you can see the stack over here, right? And this is the instruction memory, right? Instruction memory is a, is a, uh, in the flash memory that I show you at the beginning of the lecture, right? So in the instruction memory, you you store all these instructions in here at this address, okay? At this address, okay. So let's see. Let let do let trace uh, how it works. Okay, start from here, right? Start from the main function over here. Main function over here. So we will do this instruction first. So start over here. So let me see. Uh, you and I will trace together. So you have R zero here in this in in, 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 in processor R zero over here, and SP initially SP has the value of two zero 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 two zero zero. Link register has some value at the beginning. I don't care, right? Uh, and then at the uh, the PC, the programming counter, point to that instruction. Is that right? Point to the instruction, and this instruction will be executed next. And this instru instruction uh, is in the memory with the address uh, A zero 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 one three eight right here. You see, right? If you want to know. What instruction will be executed next? Look at the PC for me. So if you look at the PC, you will see ah, is there something one thirty eight? So you trace the address over here, and you know that aha, it will execute this one next. Okay, here. So if you execute this one, I hope that you will see that the new value R zero will become two right there. Okay. So let's if I move to the next slide, the value here will become two. So let's see if that's true. Wonderful. That's exactly what, uh, exactly what I want, right? So two, you, you move two to the R zero over here, and of course, when you do that, you update the PC counter. So that's why the the new value of PC is is uh, it will point to the next instruction, right? So you can see the address is one three C over here, over here, right? Okay. So the um, this uh, red arrow always point to the next instruction that you will execute, and the next instruction will be. Uh, will will be the the function call over here. Wonderful, right? We just finished this one. Now we will do this instruction, and this instruction is at this memory address, and it is a function call. Okay, so now it is maybe a hard part over here. Let me ask you. So after this one, okay, then where does it go? Somebody can tell me. If I execute this branch command. Then the next instruction will be at what address? PC will change to what? Because you branch to port, so it will jump from here to here. Do you agree with me? It will jump to here. So the next instruction will be push LR. And basically, even before looking at the solution, we really have to expect what will be the, the uh, what will be the solution, right? So I will ask you next. So next. Next address you will see in PC will be what? Will be zero a zero 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 one four C. Do you agree with me? Next next instruction it will be because it jumped to here. So yeah, somebody say four C. Wonderful. That's correct, Mark. Yeah. So let me move to the next uh, slide to see if that's correct. 
Okay. Right there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So before we start, I just ask you one more question. Uh, this one is the the function call, right? So it means that you will jump to port. But then after you finished port, you have to return to what to what uh, instruction? To this instruction, right? So that's why you need to uh, store. Actually, the the computer will uh, the the processor will do that automatically. In this case, remember that whenever you do the function call, the next the address of the next instruction will be stored in the LR, right? So you will see after this function call, LR will get the value of uh, 0 a 140 Let's see if that's true. So, so see, 140 over here, right? And the next instruction over here. Okay, so uh, we can stop right here, and then uh, next um, lecture on Wednesday, we will um, uh, finish this one, and also finish the um, uh, a little bit hard uh, um, concept is a uh, recursive, right? Especially in assembly language, and then uh, on Wednesday I would like you to uh, practice um, Zoom with me, and and to see if it is a viable option. Uh, if 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 it is, then probably we will do some uh, midterm, some practice midterm uh, using Zoom. So let's see if it works on Wednesday. Okay, so. Uh, uh, expect a, a Zoom link um, sent out from me on Wednesday, okay? So, any question? You'll email the um, URL for Zoom, right? Yes, yes, I will, I will, yeah. Okay, if uh, there is no question, so thank you very much, and see you on Wednesday.